most fear. And we have to changing things. Yeah. You think I'm really want we have to step down? Yeah. What I really want is for him to change things. Yeah. That's what I really want. Yeah. I want for him to stay there so we can flock it in 2023. Yeah. But look at what he's doing. So for me, it's with a party that is concerned about winning, not about the welfare of the people. Are you understanding me? Yes. So the entire party, that party that could be is formed, the entire party, officially the hurricane does not support a step down. Because if a step down, Joe takes over, where does that leave Mr. Comments? You understand what I'm saying, brother? Mm -hmm. That's how people play politics in Nigeria. Mm. That's about mm -hmm. interest. Mm -hmm. The angels of the people, secondary. Mm -hmm. Me, I've decided I'm rising above partisan politics. Mm -hmm. I don't care about it. I care about the people's interest. If God say I'll be something tomorrow, I'll be. It doesn't matter who in power, who not in power. I don't care. Yeah, that's where that is what I'm taking. So that's why you see some people are not talking. That's the answer to your question. Yes. I have a question. Yes, sir. I have a question. Okay. By way of information, my name is Abu Ambrose Masala. Abu. <laughs> <laughs> not the Abu Masala guy who's on Facebook. I'm not a politician. I'm a private citizen. AKA, my name is Pucci Venducci. <laughs> that is the name the world knows. I want to welcome Mr. Costa. I believe this is uh, my second or third encounter with you. Into the East United States of America. Uh, Kelly Johnson wants to introduce you to me. And we had a good time. And then you came back at Papi's Rice House. Yeah. With, uh, through your intervention, through your coming, I was able to see my childhood friend from the uh, Morgan Demonstration Elementary School, Adolphus, uh, from Chicago for many, many years. Yeah, that's, that's true. I'm wrong, I think. Yeah. I was looking for this kid for so many years, and then you <laughs> brought him to me. <laughs> the man hasn't seen the man in forever. The man who controls this home, who runs this home, he had invited me a hundred times. I refused. Something told me to come here today, and he told me, are you comfortable with Costa being in my home? <laughs> I said, I'm comfortable with anybody being around here because I pay my own damn bill. <laughs> But we have a caveat because people feel I work for George Bear. He's still my friend, by the way. And like you said, eloquently, you want for George to change. And he's my boss. I pray he change. I pray he listen. He's a nice man. We all pray for the development of our country. You're a good guy. I believe you have been jailed several times, <laughs> along with people who are in government today. And all of a sudden, you are vilified. These things happen in politics. Um, I don't want to take off most of the time here. Like I said, I drove here and then I'm intertwined with politics. But if you speak your mind in your, in your freedom fighter, then nothing should fear. I have one appeal. It's not more than a question. You talk about the diaspora, how much millions we pour into our economy. Minus that, the economy collapse. I want you guys, I don't want to use the word reconsider, but I want you guys to think about it. There are a whole vast of uh, our people who goes into Liberia for Christmas and New Year. I know you guys strategically are planning where you want to plan. Granted. Not me. But a lot of our people go back home for Christmas and New Year. The city is so densely populated that these people depend on the remittance. They depend on the little manion. They want to celebrate with their relatives and friends who come from the diaspora. 
be it America, Britain, Australia, wherever. And so that little, that little window, uh, the aspirants have to interact with their people. Sometimes it jeopardizes things, it plunge our nation in turmoil, and then the Zogos and people capitalize. And it spill beans for your good intent. So I leave you with it. You don't have to listen to me. But I just want you to consider the diasporans who will be carrying remittance in physical. That little two week window that our people have to sit and at least cherish or co be here. After January to December, after January to December 24th, then that one chicken that is available on Christmas Day, or that chicken that is available on New Year's Day. And then after that chicken, there is no chicken until the next Christmas or the next New Year. I'm speaking to those people. I will appeal if it meets fine. But in your subconscious, just think about the ones who politics does not know about. Politics exists. If it doesn't exist, it don't benefit them. It benefits me, Abu Masale. It benefits the who's and what. I want you to think about them. If we could give them a little window to enjoy their Christmas and their New Year, and then we go as business as usual, and whatever happens, you know, it happens for the better. So that is my appeal to whoever organization that is championing this cause. I'm speaking for the Don Trudis because I was once a Don Trudis. I led a student riot in Liberia in 1985. If you go to the magazine, you will see me on the front page. I was a candidate to go to Russia and study Russian politics. We formed a student in the Russell Liberia campus. I'm not a scared politician, now a private citizen. I'm a militant. <laughs> I am a militant. I was recruited. We're not scared. But sometimes in warfare, they say cease fire so that people can find food to eat. So I'm speaking to those people who will not, will we be using that window. There will be a lot of people flying into the country. And I know you guys have plans strategically, you have done your job. I'm only appealing to my, my suffering people so that they get what they want. And when they go into the cave, the struggle will continue. That is my appeal. And I hope and pray that my appeal will be taken into consideration. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Your houses are very beautiful at home. And the people here are very beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> All of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, big brother. Yes, um, I, uh, my first encounter with you, and then the second, and then the third. And I'm very honored. So, uh, you know, I just want to say this, right? Um, in a democracy, people uh, will always be, there will always be inconveniences at times, sometimes, which are very necessary. Let me give an example. June 7th, when we call the protest, many people felt that the protest would have been riotous, that people were going to get killed. Destroy things. But what I saw on that day, I will never forget. I said, look, the last six months have been the most transformative months in my entire life. The lessons I have learned from the Liberian people. I have learned so much. And I'm so humble by what I've learned. Writers in Al Jazeera said we had 20,000 people. And I was there. I know what I saw. And not 
One car windshield was smashed. Not one bag of water was thrown. And what I witnessed was so beautiful. That chapter in our history in 1979, Rice Wire, was completely obliterated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was put in the dustbin because the people were conscientized. The people who came out were not people who meant any harm. They wanted to make a statement by a gathering, not by their physical conduct. And they proved that. I'm saying this to see that I want to allay the three brothers' concerns and fears that the protest might turn riotous. People can still peacefully protest as they do in this country. And other people can be at home and enjoy themselves. Not everybody goes to protest. On August 28th, 1963, Dr. King examined the largest gathering of people in this country. 250,000 Americans gathered in the National Hall. And he delivered his I have a dream speech. They didn't break anything. One year later, we know what happened. Peaceful protest is a very powerful weapon in a democracy. Very powerful. After the protest, we received commendations from the entire international community. Let me tell you something. Yesterday, a friend of mine sent me a, a website. Getty Images. G E T T Y. They're the world's number one platform where they sell pictures and images. My picture is on Getty Images on June 7th. Mm. And the picture is being sold, the largest picture has been sold for $479 for my picture from the protest. And I looked at it and I was like, what? But if we had gone riotous, if we had smashed people's cars and looted the town, that would not happen. The people will repeat June 7, that's the show. Those who will go home and not choose to be part of the protest will be able to stay at home and still watch the protest on Facebook. People will be inconvenienced, yes. Offices may be closed, yes. But in a democracy, it is necessary for change to happen. Before black people have rights in this country, before desegregation took place in this country, people had to protest. Dr. King went to jail eight times. So protest is a necessary element. After you bring the government to power, the only other means by which you can compel them to listen to you is to protest. We don't have a choice. We either sit down and allow George to run the country however way he wants to run it, or we protest. We either decide let him run the country completely into the ground, and you will not even have a country to go back home to visit, then for us to protest. We don't have a choice. So, why do we put it to December 30th? Because of Christmas. Our country is mixed, Muslim, and Christian, and other people. June 5th was suggested, but we did not do June 5th because Muslims were breaking the Ramadan. We said we will not do that in recognition and respect for Muslims. So we move it to June 7th. December, when we decided to do the protest in December, we said, you know what? Why should we put it to December? Because from now to December, the judge we have, we're not giving enough time to act on our demands that we presented to him the last time. Three months, over three months. And also, let's put it they protest after the Christmas so that Christians can celebrate their Christmas. Now, Christmas is more important than the New Year. <laughs> when your New Year not, when your Christmas not Korean, New Year will not be Korean. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that one. <laughs> so, Christmas time, the small money you get, the feeling, yeah. New Year can be dry and according to bad. <laughs> so, people don't care about it. What about New Year? No, they turn it in. When they turn it in, I'm 14. Guess what? Yeah. Yeah. New Year. New Year, I want to say like, you're not for the big people. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> The people can sit down with the cook for the eat. So we decided, let's put it to December the 10th. Yeah. Our thing is, 
to bring 50, 60, 100,000 people on the streets. I said, Mr. President, you forced to listen to all. You see, we're giving the man time. Go. We said, we lead or leave. If you can't lead the country, leave the country. Now we have a choice. Should one man cause big people, you may not have been home anytime soon. I was there only one month ago. The people are poorer than they mm. ever been. The other people call into my show, Mr. Costa, please do the one for all. Mr. Costa, the other day I raised 350 something thousand like million dollars on the show. People came in long line for the money. I mean, how much money? Oh. People who never used to beg before are begging now. People who knew themselves have been reduced to nothing. This is not about politics. It's about the people's survival. The man has reduced the people to nothing. You think father is nothing. You think tenor is nothing. And the man is trapping. Look, the thing hurts me. I'm not doing this for Cummings or Yuri or Puaka or anybody. That's Because you know why the women, females, more than the men. In Liberia, the women take care of the children. Yeah. They send them to school, mm -hmm. or they can't afford to send them to school. Mm -hmm. The children cry on them when they're hungry, yes. and the women are suffering. Yes. And don't like that flying private jet. Wear 12,000 ass shoes. Go get Taki Apia money. Yeah. Passing around, paying for the seven months. No, the man has a choice. Three months, people. Three months. Begin to change now, or did someone tell them when you come outside and ask more things? I'm doing that. Did someone 18 or being like the So, it's about the survival of the country. If that country collapses, economic collapse for that country. I heard the Minister of Defense, Daniel Zienka. You know, the defense minister say we're not going to money to pay so that they. No, you get to say to bury the men's spoke on Thursday. Thursday, the Minister of Defense. So no money to pay the soil. No fuel oil to they put put a lamp. No ration for the soil. The whole country, the whole country is The political said they will protest too. The other day, the correctional officers to the prison said we will lie the prison. Nobody will end the no account us out. The whole country collapsed. To pay nurses, he had to go to the banks, the commercial banks, to borrow money. This is not for politics, man. I don't hate George mm -hmm. Weah. But it's about our country. I'm a sick. How do you think I live in America? I don't work here. I'm a student. My, my money comes from Liberia, from my businesses. We're losing money. You ain't want to advertise here again. People, people buying food, you go advertise. Where is that? You ain't food, they see me again to eat out of my job. Turn the country out. Thank you, Mr. Costa. The, the, the reason I asked. No, it, no, it was a good point you made. It's, 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 it's essential because yeah. we all come from a different diaspora. Yeah. Facebook's alive here, and we are not afraid. No, of course not. If you love Liberia, yeah. you should not be afraid, you should not be afraid yes. to ask questions mm -hmm. to what has affected your country. Yeah. Like I said, nobody pays anybody mortgages here. Nobody pays anybody bills. Some of us serve George Weah. Some of us serve Yuri. Some of us serve Cummings. When different individual comes to town, if you act like a scarecrow and stay home, mm. and excuse my language, you're nuts. You have to come to these events and listen to the individual as they speak. That's for sure. Because that's how our country develops. That's how our country evolves. Harry Koza is now my greatest fan, but he's a friend. <laughs> he's not my greatest fan, but he's my friend. When somebody needs to speak the truth, they speak the truth. So I will admonish all of you. Ask Costa questions that you think 
will affect change hmm. in your country. Don't ask questions because of sympathy. Liberia is at a crossroad, ladies and gentlemen. What we do today will affect our country tomorrow, positively or negatively. Take it to the bank. But thanks for my time. When you answer my question, you, 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 my, my sentiments will express well. It's where I take it by you. And I wish you well. Anybody else? Take two more. I need to No, we mean, let's say you want equal want more money, so let me use the rest. Just in case. You want to ask me. I want to ask you. I want to so just in case I know the so intent. Um what's your name? My name is Bomi. So okay. no one leave by this time. I'm here to teach myself, Jeremy. I'm Bomi Amos. Alright, thank you. Alright, nice to meet you guys. Okay. Get my question to Costa. The question goes, uh, just in case, because I know that you're so intent not to draw we are to to leave the country. They are so intent for him to change what he's doing. But just in case the protest happen to go on and George we are decide to walk out, what will be the next step? What will be you guys' next step? We got no, the soul point there, a lot of people don't want Joel to take power. That's a fear. If she happen to take power, then maybe it will be like a rebirth reaction. She will easily go back on those guys who side line her. Yeah. So what will be the next step if they say we don't want Joel? To take power because constitutionally she got to do it. Yes. But just just in case something pop up in our point like that, Joe, we had decided to say, you know what, I tell the country, I think the country over. I don't want to move on more. I'm going. That's a good question, bro. So you can say, what well, uh, <laughs> I love this country. <laughs> and because the people are suffering, I can't face the country. So I choose to go. If he says that and Joy decides to stay, it's okay. Joy takes over. That's the constitution. If Joy do say, well, the man here call it behold, and I, and I don't want to face the country. <laughs> Let me go to Jane Papa Timber, as much as we don't like him. He will take all and will organize the election. It is the constitution. Yes. That's what the constitution says. Mm -hmm. For us, the people, the men who make it all so far, the men who get problems with. <laughs> you know, he that ain't really running. Yeah. So the ordinary, you know, the old man that we can call who said the bell, but who in the market, who is in the care about who will take over. They don't care. They, they don't really care about that. But it is the politicians that are concerned. Okay, who takes over? What happens? How will things play out? So, the question my brother asked me is, if we are alone goes, if he goes, I'm not sure he's gonna go. If he decides to go, because he can't help it, he can't fix the problem, 
but the summer the rate will reach to perhaps 250. Now it's 212. Oh. Yeah. Maybe it will reach 250. Yeah. And as the rate goes up, the hardship increases. Yeah. They used to charge 13 percent on used cars. They increase it to 17 percent because they feel that when you say car, though. But they know some people will not say enough car again. Yeah, they will yeah, say, oh, but not say B again. But they do not look at them all. They say, oh, but the man will say, you see that again thing? Because when you increase it, I will say car, I pay 17%. Then nobody can buy the car in the country. The car they're parking. Why would we say car for? So I will just wait. Now, 47% of government revenue comes from the port, hmm. from customs. So people ain't shipping because people ain't buying mm -hmm. like before. So when people are not buying like before, the government not generating enough revenue to pay salaries and run the government. So the problem is like chicken in the air, which one you can't fight? So the problem here is they will never be able to fix the economy to pay people on time because they're not getting money. So how would they be able to do that? So to answer your question, brother, mm -hmm. if the president goes, if and Joel stays. And you all take over. What are we there? We're not there. We're not playing cool. We're not cool with that. We're not cool with that. But if the two of them go, fine. But if she stays and she takes over, that's all we have. And she will complete that term. And then 2023, the poor who won't be president can go run for the president. Yeah. But we hope that he will take this step down campaign seriously and begin to make changes. To improve the people's conditions. Because that's what he president for. The last question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 we're going to give this to the ladies now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the ladies have not spoken. I'm not going to ask questions. I just want to say something. Today, I was looking on Facebook and I listened to it. Say Samia Edel is a representative. Mm -hmm. and, and, yes. Yes. Enos. 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 Okay, you are yeah. representative. Yeah. And I heard him talking a whole lot. Talking about he haven't taken pay, saying B, he haven't done this, he haven't done that. So, what I'm trying to say here is we have other people in our list. They don't want to believe what is going on. Even if they, they're looking at it, but they don't want to believe it. So, I just want to say, my son, you know, Labrador need. Someone, and if God chooses you to be that one, we say thank you. God bless you. Continue to speak for us. Continue to speak for life. We are not brothers. The only country we have. Not brothers. The only country. Many days I lie there and cry. Just three days ago, I was I just driving. I parked my car. I sat up in the park and start to think about that. I said, Lord, this beautiful country. So I just want to say thank you. My advice is continue to listen, continue to ask God for wisdom, so you can do the right thing. That's all I have to say. So we're just going to open the floor. I'm not told she was saying something. I'm the moderator, so that means whatever I say goes, people. This is the DJ. So at the end of the day, um, we don't want to make it sheltered. So if the, if if our guest wants to, to, to continue to interact, that's fine. If he does not want to continue to interact, then we have to close the session. So it's left with the guest speaker, Mr. Pedro Costa. Oh, we have to the guest. Can I just say something? more questions. All right. So okay. So he's saying that he's going. Yes. People yes. go from far. So yeah. we have two persons left. That Just that to, for the voices to be yeah. heard. Okay. And that, now for photo ops, we're here at Costa. Yeah. Right. But and I'll be regulating the, the photo ops too. I agree. <laughs> we want to ask pertinent questions because <laughs> the voices are heard through the people that are back home. Got it. So I will just appeal to you to, to take maybe two more questions. Yeah. Okay. The audience. Um, I don't know. Um, guest speaker, are you okay, Mr. Pedro? I'm perfectly uh, okay. Yes. Let's 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 give it. Uh, for some of you who don't know me, I'm the lead host for Liberia Destiny Village. Uh, no, uh, I mean, everyone knows you. I've been assistant for more than eight decades in Minneapolis. We have been in Minneapolis. I'm the lead host. 
The reason why I drove here is to see my brother again for a bit of a while. Yeah. I, many of you don't know me again, as Lady Jane knows me very well, so many of us here. So, a couple of months ago, I was brought on, asked by, it's okay, we'll come back on. I was asked by some of my friends in, in uh, Bruni Park when they were on their way to Israel. So they called me on the airport, they kept ringing my, my phone. So I was like, oh, who's calling this? Keep calling me back. I don't know the person, right? So <clears throat> it's 12 calling my buddy, B. Musa, connecting me. So I pick it up, B. Musa is on the line. He said, B. Flo, where is on the line? He want to talk to you. So what is it about? The president is here, Tua is here, Marquis is here. They are trying, they want to talk to you. What do you want to talk to me about? They want you to join them, join the cause, to protect the government in the diaspora. I'm like, okay. But how do you guys want me to do this? If you guys want me to do this, what is the, what am I, what is the, why should I do this? I've been in the middle for more than a decade. You want to remove me from the middle as a talk show host. And here is for me to join your party to protect the government, right? So I go back to them and say, well, why I cannot speak on this until you guys can come back to the country. <clears throat> So what happened in the situation, they returned to Liberia, and they called me back, George Weah was there. They're like, man, we need your help. I said, well, taking my help is not a thing. There's a number of things here. First of all, you all have to understand that I'm not looking for a job in Liberia. I don't need money for anybody. A podcast and cost us program, Roots of them, every weekend. So if you want to take me from there to help the government, you all have to find a radio station. We don't have to pay the cost. So they said they were going to do that. But to make story short, I did some bad things over the months that I was with them. Because that's why they hired me to do it. They hired me to do bad stuff. Because that's what they believe in. So I went after my own brother and called him names. I went after him and And guess who said it? Diplo had a contract with our station. Yes. And he was paying out his own pocket to run his show on the station. Well, Diplo started supporting them. So Kosa and I we have gone you, back and forth and he said, you know, I posted that you both hate your wear. And my brother came out and said, we don't hate him, he hates himself. So I said, no, you hate him. So that was a setup there, right? Yeah. So back and forth between Costa and myself, Costa stuff. Because he's a man who is more understanding than, you know. So I took a step back and then I agreed to <coughs> to go and see for myself what the party was about, what George we are, you know, what is, he plans for the nation, right? So, I stay in the diaspora, I cause all kind of trouble, insult of people, you know, a lot of stuff that I never tried to do in my life, I never tried to do any of these things. So, all of a sudden I said, okay, let me go to Liberia, they call me, they say, hey, go come to Liberia, I wanna see you. So here I am, I pick up on the tidy of June, I landed in Liberia, and then, my, because I was in Liberia two hundred camping for seven months, and I went back for additional three months. So I go to visit now to see for myself. Let me use this to see what is going on in the country. Because they are feeding me information, right? This is what they want me to sell. In the talk show, because they know that. Yeah, I know. People wow. will tell you what they want you to say. So they are giving me everything, so I go, I said, let me see for myself. I arrived in Liberia, and tell you, the country is messed up. I returned to the States and cried live on live podcast. I watched it. Yeah, I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Flo. So from that point, I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't do it. So I resigned. I sent him a I tell, I told him opening that I can't do this. I can't support the government. Then I'm going to go live and tell him that I don't want to be part of it. I support the journey. I'm done. So, I want to say in this public manner, I apologize again to my brother. He yeah. went like and said, Love that. Love that. Yeah. 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 That's super nice. Yeah. Why the way the man back on the radio. People calling in Liberia telling, My appeal to you, Brother Custer, is to, from today's podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Live broadcast in Liberia, from Liberia, from Tourist, from Banga, all the places, you know. I want them to feed their own self. They put their self in this mess. Okay. I want them to go more so that they can next time they can learn politics and you don't want 
protest like you vividly said and I can admit that the protest was I was sitting on the edge you were scared. in these states of 10,000 lakes <laughs> I spent my money wisely to support kids from my alma mater University of Liberia who needs it the most I pay the school fees support other kids in the private sector. When the protests were held and it was successful, I was humble. 
because I knew Liberians could protest and go home and sleep. The president said that he went, he said it the other day, and yeah, I agree. So we're making progress because we can protest and our leaders can hear us. I'm asking you, this is a question. There is something that is blowing in the air, as Bob Marley said. There's a mystery flowing in the air. Natural mystic. If you listen carefully now, you will hear. My question is, when the protests were held, I, I, I stand to be corrected, the government wanted the protest or the protesters to present the <laughs> petition to the protester or protestee for redress. It, it happened or it did not happen. But then later on, I think it happened in closed door or it did not happen in closed door. I'm not in Liberia. I don't like hearsay. I love to ask questions to the people who are behold. Did the government of the Republic of Liberia honor his excellency, President George Weah, did they receive that protest? Did they digest that protest? The we in the diaspora, we, the petition. The petition. The petition. We in the diaspora, we are in denial. We heard make statements. So since you, Eric Costa, is here, we are quote unquote the war stage. Right now we are live. I want you to tell us. Did you guys give that petition to the government or you know we live in denial sometimes they say oh there was there was yes yeah, say they say the people when they go they didn't disagree and they did not get it the, the, the petition. We wanna know from you because like you, the government also bring people here to champion their causes. They depend on us because we gave we gave our resources to run our country. Please tell us at the end of the protest, did the government receive the petition in good faith? What happened? We don't know. Okay, thank you. But before I speak, the brother then wanted to ask a question. I hope mm -hmm. you yeah. Thank you for speaking. Yeah. 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 I don't want to go lie. No, no. Oh, you don't want to go lie. Okay, but then I can turn it away while you speak. Yeah, yeah. So answer my question. I will. I will answer them together after you speak. Yeah, my my question is um, if George Julie, I come to you by December, so and so, and a new government kind of invested to do, will you become a member of the one cook, cook for the meeting? Then you will have a leader. You think that we change Liberia or a coming or how you call it, say, or what are you? Vaikaru or UA or you think you still be changing that view? I think, I think, uh, uh, like for example, if they have uh, supporting the Democrat Party and the Republican always on my back, and when I leave and they come there, I think we'll come right back again right? and for the same move and the other talk shows, you will come again. So I don't know where, where we're going now. I think after George Weah or after Cummings or after Boyka, okay. like Russell said, going to sing. No, ask him, no. Ask, him, ask, him the, ask the man a direct question. Fine, thank you. Are you, are you done? In the right Yeah, yeah. 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 okay. Uh, this is Mike Kennedy, Sandy, I live in Minnesota. Uh, Pedro, I heard you on the radio several times. And I want to say welcome to Minnesota. Thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> last time, I think last Friday or last Wednesday, you said on the show that you there are a lot of oppositions who are waiting, who are not coming in, who are just watching, they want to be behind, and then when something happens, it will pop up. 
And we know that protest is not just, you know, it's not free. Uh, it comes with fun eyes. And we know the last time, when the, before the, the, the last June 7 protest, there were fun eyes, there were election going on. So now with, with, with the, uh, the political party who calculated, they're not coming in. And look here, the December 30th. There's any way that you, know, you, you think or you, the, 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 uh, the COP are planning to come up with any collection or anything that contributes to that protest to business Good question. Thank you. I will answer your question first. The last protest will raise $12,000, total US dollars. And I contributed 2000 of that money. The political parties did not contribute money. It's so you. They did not contribute money. It was the people who give the money. You see, sometimes it's just perception. Oh, because they make it money in the party, so maybe that you won't give the money. Perception is not always fact. I give the highest contribution. The reason is simple, because I was the biggest voice in my voting. There was a bunch of money where your mom is. I thought I needed to do that. Not that I had a lot of money, two thousand, a lot of money for me to give the project. But the money came from the people. They raised the money. So we don't need the political party to give money because the people were the one that raised money the last time. So people say, well, why are you raising money for protests? But even in America, when they have protests, they raise money. Yeah. For the drug campaign, they raise money. Yeah. So the money goes to the PV system that we have, that had the, the uh, trucks that we have, the water mm -hmm. that we have. The, every press company is going to pay. You're going to get control. Press company, media, get down, get out for nothing. So all of those things we pay for them. Now, the mobilization, I was taking a community of the PA system on the pick of all that stuff we pay for it. So to answer your question, some, the political parties, and I agree with them, and this is why I agree with them, they don't want to be seen as being involved because they say step down. Yeah, they don't want to see Oh, the opposition mm -hmm. won't move the president because it meant PJ in the election. Okay. You forgot John when you said the UN, right? Yeah. I beat him, so yeah. they won't move me. So, so I agree with the political leaders. They want to step aside and let the COP as a grassroots civil society organization do it. Now, the ordinary, the, most of the people who are supporting the COP, they are citizens, they are UP. ANC, Liberty Party, from some people that are from party set. So they don't need to hear their political leaders <laughs> say we all go before they go. No. You understand? They are there because it's about them. So the political parties, I agree with them that let's be careful how we support this thing. So I agree. So we don't need them to raise the money. Because the last time they didn't get our money. We I, raised our money. I got a question from the audience. Yeah. The audience would like to know about the 5K. Can you please explain to us? Oh, they won't pass that question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fine, I will answer the 5,000 half question. On July 15, 2018, when I was supporting the government, me and Joe, we are, you just texting, you text me back. You know what I mean? You just text the president, the president texts you back. Everybody wants that. I have to go to the phone and call the president. Everybody wants that. Who are you? Who are you? And I want to answer the president. My old friends, they want to call me. <laughs> oh. Okay, he got it, he got it, man. Can you say that again? I said to my old friend, he called me right now, that was my head. But anyway, anyway, so me and the president used to talk direct. So I'm not through Minister of State. I got messages between two of us. My man, what's up? My man, so you coming tomorrow? Okay, yeah, two years. I said, oh, Mr. President, they want to ask you to do what they will. He listened to me a few times. I will not lie. One time he listened to me, and he did something that was very good. When he had just come to power, that was the free pool, right? Yeah. Tariffs were high. When you ship things, the money was too much, and their prices were very high. So I said, Mr. President, before you came to power, my Salita issue, she increased the tariffs in December, and you took power in January. So why did she increase the time right away so that prices can get cooked up? So I think you might do something. So I need a sport. So he said, yes, yeah, so I need a sport. I told you that one. He said, oh, what's that? You read. <laughs> <laughs> you read. 
Saying, say, give me the token. So I get the token, I go, my deal. I announced it, right? Yep. I said, the president is about to reduce tariff yeah, yeah. on 2,500 commodities. And I stay long. Boom! They issue a statement. Yeah. Soon I wrote a statement, they said to me. I announced it on the radio. I said, hey, he's here. The president, listen to me. I felt like talking about it. I said, what are they got? Mm -hmm. Because the man can listen to me, right? But say that time. Any, any day I'm talking. But the people make president, so they make it one year. And I said it. I said, I signed one year contract with the OIA. It didn't matter where I would draw my support. The one year contract, not be one year, it be 10 months. I told it back. I said, all two months, I did it. So, Jogi, I didn't listen. Anything he tell you, he me. The last message I sent to Jogi before I left him was Sunday, November 25th. Check the calendar now. And then he called the date. He wrote a long message. He read the message. And I said, Where? I said, Oh. I advised him, Let's pray for this. He didn't listen to me. When I started blasting on the radio, and I said, Oh, man, one talk, one talk, one talk. He said, No, I don't talk. I have a dream of support. The fact has not been there. I support that job we have from January straight to November. Going out there, I'm coming to America. For the father, man. Come on, father. You're in America, man. Yeah, no father, I'm not making money. So, Joe, I said, oh, man, so you going, eh? So, I want to send a small thing for you. I'm a full stereo sex. Exactly. The man, president. You supporting the president, eh? Man, so, oh, man, you talk to me, you're packing money for your job. Yeah, like a chick. So, the man, you're a castle, you come to you. That day, it was the World Cup final. Sunday, July 15, 2018. I think France and Portugal were playing. Yeah. That day, Joe, we are watching the game that day. So, Casco came. So, man, I mean, maybe I'll leave my game account. You know what I'm saying? So, man, he gave me the money, put it in a five game. So, I'm going to ask the fat ass. Can I ask a question right there? Wait, let me, let me finish. Who asked, who, who talked about the fat ass in that? That me. That me. The question. That me spoke my mouth. So, can I ask a question? So, that one there, that brought that, I trapped me in the man said, F-I-T. I support the man. I had to the man, only person for six months. I like to have, we see all the pretty farm at the end. So the man brought the party. I told the party. I tell farmer, I'll be with the Calasco, Calasco said, we're not going to play the party. So let's, 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 let's do So I told the money, I pay my security pool, I pay my work out there in my hall, everything. I put a ball on 3-5 in my pocket. I got on the plane. So, I don't want to talk about Uti. Yeah. Ten months, the father then take it and say, oh, the man did brag with Jawiya. Now when you got brag? No. So the hard part that hasn't been there. No, 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 Jawiya won't give me money if I take it now and I want to brag. Yes. No, no, no. Yes. I want to brag. Yeah. When I was coming to America, my girl in 12, they met me. I was told I want to. So I was all there, I said, I'm not calling you. I said, my man, what's up? You know, my young like I don't want to sing with now. I don't get it. Well, I was like, my own man. My man. My man, my man, my man. You want to go down there, go down there. That's what I said, my man, you told me. You know, I'll put it on there, I'll put it on there. Now, I ain't got somebody to tell you. The man's got a whole point. So, my man, we got 10 G. Every month, 10 G. I want to cry. Yeah, yeah, take, take, take a picture in the hospital and put three on you, I'll sick. 
I said, Tony, you said, I never believe it. I come up, I read, I read, I guess it. 200,000. Yeah. 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 Nah, that's not my money, get off of money, too. I'm not, I don't want to say it and say that I'm not. They can offer money to other people, too. That other people, too, can refuse it. That was some people are still critical. But the issue here is everybody that I see. Every, everybody, nobody perfect. But if you give money, you look at the people. You know when they offer me a hundred and twenty thousand out here, I'm gonna minister people, minister making seven thousand six hundred. Yeah. Then they offer me ten thousand, no taxes. It's not because I pay taxes on that money, right? <laughs> <laughs> no taxes. No, that's the no taxes. No. That's ten grand. Mm-hmm. So I'm here making money in the minister here. So if you offer me that kind of money, right? And I take it. I see what you're telling me. I can't help you. Because your teens here are able to look at the poor and say they cut that way when they know it red. I'm not able, I don't have that power to do that. Because my boss shot, he's doing the post too big. The post suffering, I tell him, oh, don't worry, the writer, we have fought. Yeah, everything will be alright. So it does not work that way. But the guys don't listen. So you ask a question, to answer your question. Having answered your question, to answer your question, you know, let me tell you this one. One of the gifts I have, which is clearly not talking, was the gift of judging people. I can sit down in a room, mm. size everybody up, and be thinking, look, it's a gift from God. I can be thinking, what are you thinking? What you want to ask me? What you sound like you talk? I can be thinking. You see, my only show when somebody calls, so as soon as they hello, I said, jump around. Yeah. I said, Paul. How do you think I do that? I don't know myself. It's a gift. You know, when that brother, before you even ask that question, I knew what kind of question you would ask. Not exactly the question, but what kind of question. Hmm. I want to tell you that. I sat the whole room. You know, your question is one of pessimism, it's one of sarcasm. Oh, yeah, so the job, yes, I'm going to put them down. I knew what the brother said, I knew the brother whole body language. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No offense, bro. I'm just saying that's what I do. But I want to say this to you, man. Huh? Yeah. 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 So listen, I know. <laughs> so listen. You see? You can't, you can't judge somebody when they're not here power. You can only judge people when they get power. We can judge the we are when the get power. We are saying he loves the people. He get a country at half. Mm-hmm. So we have five private telephone suffering before. Right? 26 days, so we have Wilson and Sue, they call it Alessandro, the Messier, Alligator, Oxford, Leather Shoe. <laughs> the shoe, they are five rooms. <laughs> <laughs> you see what shoe get to get to buy a shoe. What are you? They sell that day. We accept. We are a car, we have that sister strapping the flat. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 the issue here is we can judge Mr. Cummings because Mr. Cummings is president. We can judge Mr. Boyd because Mr. Boyd is not president. And nobody here can see the future to know what else we will do. But the man who did now will know what is going on. So, John Boyd has failed to So, we know that one for a fact. If other people get a chance to come to power, when they fail to, we'll talk it. But until then, we can't judge them. So that's the situation. Tommy so has four more years. Tomorrow morning, you can say, I feel like I'm going to prosecute me. No more private jail, this and this. Now, like, people, they are forgiving. Oh, yeah. Now, like, people are very, and you can move fast. Because, now, like, people are too forgiving. Yeah, they're going to be a lot of people like this. Yeah. They're going to say, well, man, because I'm going to be a man. They go to say, why you want to get to do that? The man really doing one that. You get, you get a set down one that. The house looking. He just did it. That I didn't know you were building with looking at him. We need to press it and the devil is running. Yeah. Oh, okay. For who? For you, Jay. This is real soon. We need that kind of president. That kind of president me are looking for. Mm-hmm. And I see that one in CPP. Mr. Of course, I care. Mr. Al asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Excuse my French. I don't. This is a moderator. 
I'm a private citizen. Wait, 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 I said what I want. Why you open your ass? I remain a private citizen, but when other people are in the diaspora, I still say very long. Yeah, I know. When other people stay in the diaspora, very long. And Moravia don't know them. Wow. Push it for douche. They become a questionnaire. There you go. Can you ask, when a man goes back, some of us become live, we become notable, we become case study. Mm -hmm. I want you to ask questions so the diaspora can know and our common people in Liberia can know who is I. Mm -hmm. I always ask questions. You belong to the Congo Settlement in Morocco. <laughs> 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 I, I, I have you. The people who were here for it, the people in Benton, you saw the woman dancing the other day. She didn't get her pay. Something like that. She's depending she, she, she on you to ask questions. Yeah. Ask, ask questions. But when you, when you this boy they call Costa. You know, the man from, I know the man from Africa. They that all robot, I know but you. I don't hear the champion he call. <laughs> he on my, he on my turf. Okay. <laughs> he even cause a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. I will speak. Uh, so I want everybody to be comfortable. Ask questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Labrys, we are deceptive. Oh no, I know. I know. I want you to ask questions. So tomorrow. Uh -huh. I don't know who that here. I don't know I want you to ask questions. Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are boy, very political in the in the barber shop. <laughs> oh, okay. But I want you to ask questions. The woman, the woman platform is live. No, okay. You see the man? No. You see the women? Okay. The people who depend on. I want you to. Ask this man question. Okay, people. <laughs> um, I got, I got one more person. Hello, hello. I got one more person to ask a question, and then we're going to give it to the guest speaker to say his last words, and then we're going to go back to what we're doing because um, we don't want this whole thing to be, you know, just talking. We want to have some fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. But, but brother, I want to ask a question. So yeah, I think I'm ready right for his question now. On your I think I'm calling the brother to <laughs> ask a question. Mr. Costa. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> I, was part, I was part of the CDC. Yeah, and uh, Samuel Twain and the other, rest of the guys, rest of the guys really embarrass us. And I know you do have some ambitions of being somebody in Liberia. My question to you, yeah, more us. Can you tell us, maybe not next year, five, two years, three years, five years, but what are you really looking at in Liberia as a person, as an individual, not as a politician or radio host or talk show host? What are you looking at? What do what, what you think would be your calling for Liberian people? Because some people, when I was sitting here, some people said, this is the man, this is our leader, this is this. But my personal question, this is personal, because the mistake we made, and Liberia have made, and the Liberia will regret for the next 10 to 20 years by doing what they did. It's hard to be on top. But for you, so if Hemel Costa walked this principal street of Monrovia, that people would know to say, Costa said this five years ago, two years ago, three years ago, he wanted to be there so we can hold you accountable. Just how we hold George Weir and his rest of his gang accountable. I knew you were any kid. Thank you. We said that I'm on the road. Oh, boy. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. You want to ask that question or re echo that question from your live uh, feed? You want to Miss Jessica? Well, he's just saying that he would like to know what your aspirations are pertaining to you, um, not just a talk show host or maybe someone that's the head of COP. He wants to know what are your aspirations for Liberia as an individual. Thank Correct? You. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I want to say this, right? Correct. Um, the thing is, as chairman of COP, I can't use COP as a launch pad to base my personal political aspirations on. What I do as the chairman of COP is for the people, the country, 
COP was not created as a political party to be used as a vehicle for Henry Costa's or Darius DeLong's political ambition. So COP cannot be that. Now, as an individual, I have the right to have aspirations. I have the right to want to serve in an elected position. I have that right. And what do I want? If that's what you're asking, how do I want to transition? Here is what I want. I have a plan. And I will not say everything here in detail because you got to hold some things in the chat. Okay. But I can say this much to you. I think many years ago, when I was a little boy, going to Lakiri Mission, there was this day, and I cannot forget. I will never forget that day until the day I die. I was about 15, 16 years old. And this day, my friends and I were sitting under the tree. And I can almost remember the friends who were sitting there with me that day. And we were arguing about something, and I was saying what I was going to be in the future. And I said to them, I will be president of this company one day. And they would say, oh, yeah, oh, come on, man, shut up, man, whatever. You know, being dismissive and condescending. And I remember taking a rock. That tree that day, I was to cut that tree down. And I marked that tree that day. And I was a 15, 16 year old boy. And today I'm 37. And I said, I'll be president of this country. And I didn't understand how that would happen or how that would happen. I just felt that I was going to be president. Like every, every kid would say, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was what I wanted to be. That's what I said. Eight years ago, Good friend, but not friends, DJ mm -hmm. encouraged me to get on the radio. Now, I had no experience, no training whatsoever in broadcasting, whatever. I didn't even know how to work my way around the mixer, the microphones, and stuff. But I started my radio. Fast forward, eight years later, here I am. With good people like you who take time off with busy schedule, come to the air. You think that's my doing? That's God's doing. Good I believe something. I believe that that dream that I had as a little boy back then, the fact that I can be where I am today, as modest as that may be, but looking back eight years where I've come as the biggest voice in the country, it is not by my own power or by my own might. It is by the divine glory of God. It is by God's divine plan for my life. Even when I say when I read it, I mean all this strength, all this down. Look, I just feel there's something that propels me. When I went to Liberia, I'm a very deeply spirit, spiritual person. When I went to Liberia, I met with two very spiritual people, big pastors, and I consult spiritual people. Some, sometimes I even fast and pray. But I do it quietly. I don't talk about it on the radio. And this man of God, there was this woman of God I met with her, Mother Law, I will call her name. She told me, she said, Costa, God she had this vision about me. She tried getting in touch with me. I'll tell you the story. She called Vice President Joseph Walker and she told him the vision she had about him. She tried calling me, she didn't get me. She sent me a text and I called her back. And, I, and she explained the vision to me. Then I said, please come to my office. She came to my office, she explained to me. And this woman also told me some things that I will not explain everything here tonight. But there were some things that she told me that were happening that I Already. If somebody tell you five things and three have already happened, then the other two you can be sure that they will happen to you. <laughs> that woman told me things that I have seen. One of them, she said, when you go to America, Liberians will organize programs that will honor you. What, what happened two weeks ago? <laughs> she said the American embassy will issue a statement on your protest. What happened? She said, today, as I speak to you, when you leave from here today, you go into some other program with beating Sasa and drum there today. She told me things. She also told me, she said, God will make you president of this country. That same, that same woman. I don't know how this is going to happen, but I just feel that God raised me as a flawed and imperfect as I am to do something. That's how I feel. And when it comes to my spirituality and my faith in God, I am not ashamed and I am not 
humble ever I am, boastful ever my faith in God. Amen. Because God brought me here, there is no way God can take me. Yeah. Eight years ago, you didn't know me. I said you more probably, yeah. but all of you here, you know me. <laughs> God took me a little boy, put him on the radio. Today, when I speak, John William can dream of. President can get scared. That I'm me, that God. Amen. And I can see the path in front of me. If I just stay in schools and keep being the voice of the voiceless, I will make some mistakes here and there. But you know what? You know, the lady told me something. She was sitting in my office. They say, oh, she said, Costa, let me tell you something. Right now, I told you, God said you'll be president, but you think you. But when I asked, it's going to happen. What I was thinking, the woman told me what I was thinking. She said, you're thinking, God, when I will get the money for this to happen, I need money. The people will not just take a talk show host and make him president. You understand? God will do other things in your life. I would be greater than just being a talk show host. You see, like, Brandon, say, yeah, of course I can talk with that, but I won't want to be president of all. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so she said, God will do things for you. She said, you are working on something in America that God will make happen. And it is that thing that will give you the resources, the money. I tell you, more while working on in America. I got a project here in America, a big project. I've never said anything about it on the radio. And the woman is telling me about what I'm working on in America. She ain't going in detail, details. I'm just telling you how deeply spiritual I am. And I don't need anybody to convince me that there is a God working in my life. Because I just look at my life eight years ago and I look at my life today. Yeah. Mm. That the evidence that there is God working in my life. Yeah. And I'm learning to, to be, you know, some people say I'm arrogant, I'm this, I'm that, but they don't really know me. They don't, they don't really know me. But I tell, you, I tell you this. I tell you this. God is doing wonderful things in my life. The other return to the music, and and I want to say thank you. I, I, so before you close, yeah. I just want to say thank you. I asked that question because of a reason. You know, mm -hmm. and I, let me just say this to you. Like I said, I knew you from Broville. You know, I live down here. You live I up the hill. I knew this. But, <laughs> but, but I asked you that question because uh, the robot I, feel, I feel very confident. You know, many, many, many times, but you brought this up because I defend the COP in the barbershop. And you may not know that I defend the COP in the barbershop. And I defend the COP wholeheartedly. Like I defend the CDC. And I can defend the COP, the COP because of that reason. And I can tell you, you can rest assured. You know, some of us, the, people don't know us to be the people that are running around America for our names to be all there. But you can rest assured, if you decide to do anything, you have the full backing of me and my family. Whoops. Thank you, Mama. Well, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Go, go, then. Yes. Yeah, okay, you're the last person. Okay, thank then you. We'll go back to thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, yeah. So my whole thing, uh, Mr. Costa, I know the COP is uh, is in existence. The COP is the voice of the people. I'm looking at because I hear you saying that okay, in the future, if God gave you the opportunity, and maybe yeah, God can give you the opportunity to become the leader. Are you creating the avenue where the COP will continue to exist? Because after you become a leader or someone else who want the COP to stay, be standing to say, you know why we see flaw in your government or in whatever government to come, will be able to question them. Is it an avenue that you also create that COP will continue? Because it is for the people. <laughs> you know, I want to say this, right? That's a very legitimate question. Very good question. You know, there is this perception that I am the COP and that whatever I say represents the COP. You know, president, how you that is not the true. COP? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a COP. I'm not a COP. There are lots of people who make the COP. We argue, we disagree, 
Yes, I may have been the one who founded the COP, but I don't control the COP. And we have hired a lawyer who drafted the Articles of Incorporation to incorporate the COP as a civil society organization. So that means the COP will be existing legally. One of the reasons why we did it is so the COP will be able to sue and be sued. When we see certain things that have been done wrong, we we'll go to court. The way they can do it in America, be suing Trump, left and right. Yeah. That's how we're But to do that, you need to be a legally registered organization to have legal standing before the law. Yeah. So we are working on that. Now, if, if in the future, God decides, if it is in my cards, that I become president of the country. You know, I don't hide my ambitions. In Liberia, old people, I, I, it's okay for an old man to say he be president, right? Yeah, yeah. And when young man say, oh, you. So they so, so they wrong with that ball. You know what I'm saying? They the ball getting frisky now. Thought we were gonna be president. But I don't hide my ambition because I talk plenty and I can talk my heart. I don't talk everything, but I can talk my heart. I just feel that the country needs a different kind of leadership. I want to see a president who, when you enter a ministry, you will not see the president picture on the wall. Mm. No. They hide in Africa. The president, but that's what I want to see. Thomas and Carol did it. Yeah. I want to see a president where when you go to the airport, you're not see all the whole government following to the airport. That's true, man. Mm -hmm. That was so I want to see a president where we we'll give you all 15,000 a car to drive as a minister. Yes. I want to I wanna see a president who will put your brother and your sister in jail. Yep. That, 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 that the country I want to see. Let me tell you something. You know why I didn't run for senator in when I was alone, right? People wanted me to run against. Yeah. To run. But then you should give it to the Lord. I didn't run. No, I'm not running against the Lord. The Lord run. I'm not running. No, I'm not running. No, but it's 2023. I don't even know what will happen in 2023. I don't even think about 2023. Whatever God says. Somebody would die. But the truth. The honest thing is, I love the talk to everybody. Whatever will happen. I'm not funny about this, of course. A lot of librarians don't like to talk death. <laughs> no, no, hopefully no one will die. Well, a lot of us will die before that time. I pray all of you will be alive. We'll be we'll be alive. alive. Yeah. 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 But I want to say this to you. Give me that lady hands. Right now, I'm at a place in my life where uh, I don't put my political <laughs> interests first. I just focus on the work that I do. I listen to the people I learn, like I've learned tonight. I'm in the mode where I listen and I learn. I, I'm, I'm learning, mm -hmm. I'm learning. Mm -hmm. When I, every time I meet like this, I'm talking, I'm learning, I'm listening, I'm learning. I'm adjusting the way I do my show. I'm adjusting. People say, don't cut people off when you learn what they say. I learned that, I stop. People say, don't use stupid, don't use damn, don't use these words. I stop. I'm learning because, you know why you listen? And you know why you do that? It's because apart from the people speaking, but God is also directing your path. When you're going higher, you gotta make changes. You have to listen. Now, listen. I'm gonna run for president when the time comes, and God will let me know when the time is right. Yeah. It may not be 2023, but I just feel. I just feel. You know what? When I look at the men and mess in the country, I say, y'all be spoiling it. You know? It's the MVP title. Nobody can take it. They're leaving it there. I can't take it. The most valuable player. I want to become the president who when they say, talking. Yeah. They say, yeah. But, but, but the man, we are telling you, we have to take it. No, I'm talking about you, MVP. No, I'm not MVP, yeah. I'm MVP or Tosho, Tosho business. <laughs> But I'm president today. <laughs> but the thing is, in the COP, we are so well structured and so democratic that we argue, we disagree, but nobody runs the show at home. Even though I'm the voice of the COP, I'm the spokesman and I'm the chairman. But we go, some sometimes when we disagree, we put it a vote. You see, some you gotta practice what you preach. You can't say you're a Democrat and one man. We don't want to run one man show. Yeah. So the COP 
is being built as an institution that would, is bigger than Henry Costa. Come on, I can lay down and die today. Is this your people die because I die? Uh, no. no. It will move on. So that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, nice. In conclusion, true. before I sit down, mm -hmm. I just want to say this, right? I thank all of you for coming out here tonight. I'm humbled. Anything, each and every one of one of you. Some of some of you I've met before. Most of you I'm meeting for the first time. I thank you very much. I I didn't expect this. Eight years ago when I got on the radio, I didn't expect we would be here. I did not. Where we are, I think is God. Period. You know, when I'm going to Liberia, and people say, Costa, be careful. If they will kill you, they will do something. I just go, I say, I don't care. They can't kill me. I just believe, you know, Dr. King said something in his last speech he made before he died. I've been to the mountaintop. He said, like any man, I would love to live a long life. Hmm. But longevity is not my concern. For my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, and all flesh shall see it together. I may not get there with you, yeah. but I know you will get there. Yeah. And I just feel if I am to be whatever God wants me to be, Joe, yeah. y'all can't kill me. Ellen didn't kill me. Nobody will kill me until my purpose is served. Yeah. So because of that, why I am not reckless with my life, but I just march on believing that I can't be killed. And not that I get sick here, but God has a plan for me. Because he brought me here, it is enough assurance that he will take me further. And I just believe that. And that, was, that is what keeps me going. When I sit on that radio and I speak, oh, well, depending on. But it is just that conviction that God will use me to do something great. Other than just being a talk show host. And when Darius Dillon was running for senator and I supported him, and I, I used to talk, to said, Dillon, you better not mess on what put you there. Because go and serve well and make us proud and pave the way so that they can know that not all advocates are fake. Not all advocates would betray the struggle when they get power. And because they don't is living up to what he promised and what we discussed, that is paving a way for people like us so that we too can have an opportunity to prove ourselves and put into practice the things that we preach. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Okay, people, thank you so much for watching. We will be in uh, Puxy Rock, and we will also be in Jumbo Africa tonight. I meet us there for pictures, for autographs, for everything. This is Lady J on Everything Liberia, and I'm covering this uh, um, historic moment in Minnesota with Henry P. Costa. Thank you so much for watching. Uh huh. Lady J.